Hey, everybody, this is Troy McLawhorn from Evanescence, and you're watching Loud TV. So, Troy, um, my first question with this uh, new Evanescence album, The Bitter Truth, is... Um, I was wondering if you were more and more involved into the, the writing process um, in, in the band Evanescence. Yeah, this is uh, the most I've been involved with any of the albums, which, I, you know, there's only been two original albums since I've been in the band. So, uh, you know, this band, it takes a while to uh, put out an album. But uh, on the, the third album, which was the first album I actually recorded with them, I was in another band when they started the album. Um, and and uh, then um, Amy and I got together and uh, I ended up going to Nashville to play guitar on the album. And they were still doing pre-production on some of the stuff um, on everything, actually. But a couple of the songs weren't totally finished. So I got writing credit, I believe on four songs on that album, but on this album, I was there for the whole process. So um, I had a, a lot of input with it, which was, you know, it was great. I, I was glad to be there from start to finish and not come in, you know, in the last minute. And, and uh, I felt like I was involved in the whole process. It was nice. Yeah. Um, So uh, I've read that you you have written uh, most of the most of the riffs, and um, what about your collabor collaboration with the other guitarist, Yen uh, Majura? Yeah, um, it, it's been difficult in these times because she lives in Germany. Um, when we started the album, we did. Uh, We got into the studio at the begin beginning of 2020 in uh, late January, and we were in the studio until probably mid to late February, three weeks or so, and we recorded four songs um, that were going to be on the album, and we were scheduled to go on tour um, on the World's Collide Tour um, with Within Temptation. And that all got canceled because of the pandemic. And because we were headed to Europe, Jen flew home and then everything happened. I'm glad she flew home because she would have been trapped in the United States for like a year. <laughs> <laughs> so she, she got home and uh, she's been in Germany ever since. So the collaboration has been more difficult because of that. Um, but because of technology, Um, it's such a blessing that we have, uh, internet and computers that we can pass ideas back and forth with. Uh, so, um, you know, she, she's, um, been able to play her guitar parts in Germany and then send them to us so we can, um, add them to the record. So it's, it's, it's been an interesting time. Uh, I, I've really feel that this new album the bitter truth is more guitar oriented than uh, on synthesis the the riffs are louder and uh i feel um yeah you did that yeah job. well i absolutely agree with that because the um the plan with synthesis synthesis was to highlight the orchestra And, and the, you know, the instrumentation behind the rock band that people don't always, you don't hear clearly because there's a rock band playing and that's going on in the background. So we wanted to reverse it and put the band in the back, let the orchestra come up front and shine along with Amy's vocals. So that was the point of the synthesis album and tour. Um, so And it's kind of funny because going from that to this album, I think um, fulfilled our needs to have orchestration on a lot of the songs. I think there's only strings 
on two songs on this album, I believe, if I'm correct. Mm -hmm. um, and um, that's very different for this band. There's usually a lot of orchestration on on the albums, a lot of strings and stuff. So I think that's pretty different for and this you album. You worked again with Nick. And uh, yeah, it's more, it's maybe more, um, I would say, a more natural sound. Yeah, well, Nick did um, the third album. Yeah, that's um, right. The self-titled. Yeah. And um, so uh, coming back to Nick after about 10 years, it was uh, a lot of fun because we all remembered why we had so much fun the last time. He's a great producer, a great guy. He's fun to work with. Um, we have a lot in common musically. Um, it, the vibe is just, uh, it's great. And it's good for creating music um, when you're in that kind of atmosphere. Everybody's comfortable. Everybody's laughing and having fun. And that's what it's supposed to be about. So, we, yeah, we really enjoy working with Nick. So despite the covid situation it was a it seems that it was a, a great a great fun in studio it, well it was probably even more fun this time because when you're we uh, did those first four songs and then we went into lockdown for months and the next time we got together i believe was um well in Nick's studio God, was it July or June? I can't remember, but it was months later. So um, it was more difficult to get together because we had to find a way to get to Nashville. I drove myself, so that was easy for me. Mm -hmm. I just got in my car. I didn't talk to anybody. I got gas and jumped back in my car with my mask <laughs> on. And uh, I didn't really have any contact with anyone. But for some of the other members, like, Tim, he took a bus from California, a tour bus. Wow. Um, so we all got tested individually at home to make sure that we, you know, we were all good before we went to Nashville. So we had, we had a nice bubble in the studio in Nashville. Everyone stayed, you know, stayed at home when we weren't in the studio Um, no one was going out and partying or anything like that. We were bringing the party to us. <laughs> um, but um, it, was, it was definitely more difficult. But once we got there, I think everybody was just really glad to feel a, some sense of normalcy. You know, it felt like we were doing um, what we should be doing. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've read a commentary on your uh, first video clip, uh, Better Without You, and it was written, it's too loud. But, uh, you know, it's uh, rock is uh, about loudness, and uh, I think it's never too loud. <laughs> <laughs> you know, who, can... who said that? Ah, it's uh, maybe a, a fan or, <laughs> you know, I don't know. But <laughs> for me, it's never too loud. And... Uh, It's about absolutely rock, not rock and roll, you know? Yeah. Well, who I don't remember. I think it was Kiss that had a shirt that said, if it's too loud, you're too old. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not too old. It's a good thing. No, never too old to rock, to <laughs> rock and roll. Never too old to rock and roll. That sounds like a good shirt, too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what about this? Uh, yeah. The bitter truth. Uh, mm -hmm. let's go to maybe uh Emmy lyrics and uh it's it's written in, in a song I don't I don't need drugs in wasting on you and yeah mm -hmm. what about the is it uh the real drugs she's talking about or virtual drugs and uh because I think it's uh yeah. it's a real problem you know Dr the real drug today uh, yeah It's a... I think I think drugs have been a problem for a really, really long time. Even back, you know, um, when we had the snake oil salesmen here in the States, they used to sell all these things that had cocaine in it and remedies, they called them. But they were they were just drugs. Um, and it, it's been it's been a problem for 
you know, a really long time. And uh, um, I don't think that song's really about that in particular. I think she was using that in a more of an artistic sense. Um, and it, it really paints a picture in your mind. But um, that's a great question for her, too. I could be wrong about that. I think every person interprets lyrics to a song in their own way. It, they identify with the the words in the song a certain way and that's the person that wrote that song might have been talking about something completely different but um but that's what's beautiful about music and make it makes it universal everybody can identify with it even if their interpretation is different from the writers mm -hmm. but um, a bit of truth is really yeah. not you know It's uh, yeah. It seems that it's funny. It seems that uh, it's a it's a good way to entertain. And uh, in fact, it's a it's a nightmare. So it could be drug. It could be sometimes love. Well, <laughs> I think the cover for me is uh, there's a saying here that you know when you're doing something you you don't necessarily want to do or. Um, you feel like you're forced to do something. They say you're swallowing a bitter pill, right? And, and that's kind of what the album cover represents to me. Like, and, and that doesn't mean we're doing something that we don't want to be doing, but it, it could mean that there's been things in our past that we were pushed into doing that we didn't want to do. Or, you know, I mean, it, it could be about the industry, the music business, our personal lives. Um, so again, I think everybody will find their own, um, connection with it. Yeah. Some fans, um, would like to know, uh, what's your favorite song on the, the bit of truth? Yeah, I keep getting asked that and I, I'm just going to keep changing it because I don't, I love them all. They're great, but, uh, here I'll pick one. <laughs> <laughs> um, broken pieces shine. That's a good one. Okay, this is the the second one. Um, the game is over is really cool. I, you know, there's a lot of good um, guitar stuff on this record. I think for me, you know, um, it's nice when you. I I look forward to going and playing these things live because it's going to be a, a lot of fun to play some of these guitar riffs live. There's some heavy stuff on there that um, yeah. it's, it's going to be fun. It could be heavy, but uh, some some parts are also very intimate on this album, which is great. Yeah. You know, it's a, a gap between some atmospheres into yeah. the album and even into songs, and which is uh, very diversified and great. Yeah, um, Amy's idea was to, uh, and I think that I kind of want to do this on every album too, is make it um a journey you put it on you put on your headphones or listen on your stereo and you just sit back and kind of close your eyes and and get into the soundscape and um there's a lot of segues between songs little instrumental pieces that um amy spent a lot of time on and i think they turned out really really super cool um and there's a lot of um depth to this re record i think it explores a lot of different emotions and um you know it would be boring if we just had just heavy 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 to me I i'm a big fan of bands like the beatles that weren't afraid to try all kinds of things mm -hmm. i was my mom was a big beatles fan so i grew up listening to that kind of music and um they they did pretty much every type of music you could imagine they did country pop you know rock whatever piano ballads they did everything and i i've always um i've always wanted to be kind of like that i don't want to just play one um one type of music and and be uh one dimensional okay and with the guitar uh your guitar is in studio did you play six and seven strings Yeah. Yeah, I did. I played, um, I played my PRS seven strings that are, um, 
I think they're baritone seven strings. They definitely have a longer scale length than a regular six string guitar. Um, you know, it increases the tension. So the low string doesn't sound terrible <laughs> when it's tuned way down. Um, but uh, yeah, I played a few Gibsons. Nick had some guitars in the studio that, we, that I used. Um, we had some baritone guitars. I, I've got some, a couple of the Mike Mushock uh, PRS, Paul Reed Smith guitars that I played. And, and I played some normal six strings. I, um, and I, I was trying to recall if I played a telly. I usually try to play a telly somewhere on every album because i just love the way they sound but this music isn't necessarily a teleca telecaster kind of band but it does sound pretty cool sometimes when you double your guitar part like you use a heavy guitar sound and then you double it with a telly it gives it kind of a percussive element that um is really cool but i don't i don't i don't think i used one on this album i'm kind of pissed about it <laughs> um what about the next tour going back to with uh within temptation in europe yeah. and mm -hmm. uh so people are yeah they want you to tour everywhere from ireland to north america to south america uh I, yeah. i'm ready yeah, are you ready uh, i'm ready yeah I, i i think everyone's ready at this point but um I'm really looking forward to going out and, and touring and playing these songs. And um, it, it's, it's fun to have a new batch of material to play for the fans. And I hope that, um, you know, with the Evanescence fans, it's always pretty good. I, you know, some bands find that when they start putting out new music, people just want to hear the old stuff, you know. But I, I think our fans are different somehow. They, they always enjoy hearing our new album. And, and then we end up, you know, finding out what the fans' favorite songs are. And then we kind of um, hone the set list into the perfect set list for the fans, you know, and for us, something enjoyable for everybody. And last question from a fan. Uh, will you replace, uh, replace sorry, Miguel, your amp buddy? On stage because I, I've read oh. it was stolen in uh, Mexico. It was, but um, some fans sent. They found the same exact doll that I had, Miguel Myers, and uh, and they sent me. So they sent me the doll and the the sombrero. So I have a replacement. Yes, and I actually still have. We did find. Miguel's old sombrero. So I, I have the original hat still. But uh, uh, yeah, the fans hooked me up. He'll be there. So it's, it's also ready for, for the next Oh, one. yeah. It's ready. 